praise and grace together. That's hymn number 161, if you need to look at it. 161, let's sing it all four verses. Think about what this says, too. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind. I like it all the time. <laughs> Amen. Welcome to Bethany. And well, it's certainly good to see you and have you here in the Lord's house this morning. And I appreciate the Lord's presence, don't you? Amen. I thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful, isn't it? Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to know the Lord. We uh, want to take some prayer requests this morning and might mention this, uh, Brian's not able to be here, so we uh, won't be having children's church, but we've got something in the place of that, and Brother Adam, you get ready here, okay? And uh, he'll share with us this morning, uh, uh, instrumental number, so that'll be a blessing. And again, it's just good to, good to be in the Lord's house. I want to just uh, ask continued prayer. I ask you to pray for Beverly and myself. And I appreciate the Lord helping us. The Lord's really been good. 
and uh, this knee seems to be a little bit more of a problem than the other, but the Lord's good. He's just He's with us and helping us. And I told somebody a while ago, she's got a, the, I think one of the big problems that Beverly has is, is her caretaker. Uh, that happens to be me. And, uh, but I'm trying to hang in there, and so we just keep praying for her. And then I got another request this morning. My, uh, my daughter-in-law, Melissa, uh, she's in the hospital again. We ask you to pray for her. The Lord will help and uh, help Tim there. And we appreciate you praying. Appreciate prayer, and I want to thank you. I need to say this. I thank you for all your prayers. I'll tell you, we could feel them and sense them and know them and, and see God do some things and, and just praising Him. I want to praise Him, and uh, we thank the Lord. Maybe the other, other prayer requests, the other things to be mentioned this morning. Amen. Appreciate the prayer. Again, we certainly welcome you to, to Bethany. We have... Uh, couple of things to read. Uh, first of all, uh, a thank you to our church. This thank you from the Wilkes uh, Ministry of Hope. And it says, thank you for your support of Wilkes Ministry of Hope through your kindness. You've shared the gospel of Jesus and have shown his love to many people. And thank you for making this possible. And please pray for the toy store, which will be December 2 through 4 and 7 and 8 and 10 and 11 in December be doing things uh, somewhat different, of course, to the, as relating because of the pandemic, and the, but we're going to go on with the toy store and be praying about that, and of course, this is from the Minister of Hope. And then we have an announcement here, it said, proud to announce the birth of Astrid Jane Driver, seven pounds, two ounces, 19 and three-fourths inches long, to Jesse and Macy Driver. So we rejoice with them and share their joy baby girl and uh, 19 three inches long and just as tall as he is the baby had to be long so uh, so that's going to be a tall girl I believe uh, so that's uh, we share the, the blessing of that and uh, praise the Lord Again, it's just good to be in the Lord's house this morning and normally we'd be having our children's churches our usual part of the service and I'm glad brother Adam's here to share with us and you go ahead just let the Lord touch you brother
Hey, 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 praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Appreciate that. Amen. Well, that is soothing to your soul, isn't it? Amen. Blessing that in. Any birthdays this morning? Amen. Let's all sing together hymn number 120. Praying, isn't that a blessing? That's a blessing. My son had called me in the situation they were in. I'll just share this as praise to the Lord. And he said, Dad said, uh, we uh, said I prayed and didn't know nothing else to do, you know, just turned over to the Lord. And, and he said, in about 15 minutes time, Mary, the Lord worked it out. Isn't it a blessing to see? And somebody asked me once, uh, I was witness to a fellow in Tennessee on vacation. We were there one day and, uh, in his store there. It just it, it, My grandson was uh, his, uh, toy store. Or back then he was interested in trains. But anyway, there's nobody in there but Timothy or, or Isaac looking around. And so I wasn't interfering nothing. And so he ended up with me, the store owner did. And I was trying to witness to him and so he, he said to me, he said, that's just what you believe. said, you don't have no assurance. Well, I said, I've got two big assurances. One of them is Holy Spirit, bearing witness to my spirit. And then I said, another big assurance I've got is answered prayer. Because I prayed and could not do things myself many times and uh, was at uh, wit's end, as we call it, and I've seen God do some things that only he could do. and There was no other way to explain it except that God did it. 
So we've got assurance of answered prayer. We're in the book of Acts chapter 2 this morning. And we're getting reading in verse 21 of this chapter. And the message this morning is the salvation of the Lord. I trust the Lord will help us. Our memory verse for this week is Philippians 1 verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I'm glad for that, aren't you? What a blessing that is. I was thinking, trying to think uh, last night, I believe, on the memory verses we had had. This makes, I believe, six. And I was trying to get some of the other ones on in mind. And so you might want to do that and add to the memory of other verses. Our assignment this week is to read 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, if we get to the second sermon this morning, uh, s- several of those points are in 2 Timothy chapter 2. And the second sermon this morning is some descriptions of the Christian life. And there's 14 points in it and five in my first sermon. So we'll go just every how far we can go. I used to have a fellow in my church and he would do this whenever he thought that time was up. And uh, I can see him in my mind almost now. And my eye would catch him sometime and he'd be doing this. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, don't take a rocket science to figure out that. Cut it off. You know, it's time to cut it off. And so he used to do that to me. <laughs> and I knew it was about time to sail down, find a landing place somewhere. And uh, he was precious. In the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 21 of this chapter, I've never preached in my remembrance of these verses, but I've read them and knew about them. But the Lord helped me, I believe, to see some things that I want to try to share. In Acts chapter 2, verse 21, And the Bible said, It it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Privilege again of being in the Lord's house. Has already been testified, Brother Gary, that the Lord surely is gracious and merciful in answering prayer, and He's merciful that any of us could be here this morning. And I can truly say from the bottom of my heart, it sure has been good to be in the house of the Lord. And I pray you'd move in the message. Lord, we pray for each one here on the sound of the voice in the sanctuary this morning, and then for those that will be watching uh, by way of video, we pray that you'd speak to every heart and we just want to thank you. Bring to mind and heart, Lord, the things that you'd be pleased with in the message and I want to thank you and praise you. May it be anointed from heaven. Uh, move forward in the service. May you keep your hand on it, Lord, and do that that only you can do. And we'll thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to look this morning at uh, five things. First of all, in relation to our, our verses and in the thoughts of the salvation of the Lord. I say at the outset, as we do most every Sunday, uh, those that are watched by way of video, we thank you for watching uh, the service here coming from Bethany Baptist Church up here on the beautiful, beautiful brushy mountains. And uh, so we thank you for that. In the book of Acts chapter 2 and the verses that we read this morning, I'm thinking about salvation uh, the second five thoughts that I have is the planning and uh, the, the providing, the beginning, the carrying on, and the completion of salvation. All think, first of all, as we see in these verses, is the planning, the planning of salvation. Now, there's thoughts that can be uh, gathered from these verses and that are uh, expounded on by Bible scholars and others that have studied the Word of God and and, and think in the verses here and some real deep uh, waters that we're wading in this morning whenever we think about uh, the determined counsel of God and the foreknowledge of God. And in our verses, we certainly see the sovereignty of God. 
And we see also the free will of man. Now in that, we see that in our verse here, uh, where it says in verse 23, that him, speaking of Jesus, uh, being delivered by the determined counsel and the foreknowledge of God. Being delivered by the determined counsel and the foreknowledge of God. Now in the foreknowledge of God, God knew that when he created man and give him a free will that man would sin. Now, in God's plan, I've written in my notes here something, and I think I'll change that. I'd written in my notes that when God acted in creation, he also acted in redemption. When God acted in creation, he also acted in redemption. Now, there's a verse in the book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 8, that says that Jesus is as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. My little thing that I wrote was that when God acted in creation, he also acted in redemption. But I think I need to change that, is that God acted in redemption before he ever acted in creation. Now we find a verse in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 that I believe bears that out. Our verse in the book of Revelation 13 and 8 says that he is as a lamb slain from the foundation of the world, from the word from. But in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, it says that he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. So we read from that verse and I believe we can determine and think that it is true that God acted in redemption and plan before he ever created the earth, before he ever acted in creation. And God knew some things in the foreknowledge of God. Now, whenever we begin to think about that, the foreknowledge of God and the sovereignty of God, we see in our verse again that it says that him, speaking of Jesus, that God hath delivered. God hath delivered. We read the verse again. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel of God. And in the knowledge of God, and you have taken by wicked hands and by wicked hands and have crucified and slain. We see in that verse this morning the sovereignty of God and the free will of man. Now the Bible says there in the determinate counsel of God that God delivered Jesus. He delivered Jesus to be crucified. Book of Isaiah 53, and what a blessing that is, and how that brings such a, a thankfulness and gratitude to our hearts, and praise unto his name that God laid on him the iniquity of us all. In Isaiah 53, the Bible said that it pleased God to bruise him. God delivered his only son to be crucified. That was in the sovereignty and the planning of God, our first point. But we see that wicked men crucified the Lord. Now, there's something interesting there about that. We'll, we'll go on a little bit first. But the planning, and then thank God for the providing. I'm glad that God not only planned, but God knew in his foreknowledge that in the creation of man with a free will that he would sin. God knew in his foreknowledge of the holiness that in his holiness he demanded perfection. God knew also in his holiness that there would have to be a justification wherein God could justify man and forgive his sin. God knew in his love that he would provide a sacrifice sufficient for mankind to pay the penalty for the sin. God knew that, I believe, in all the foreknowledge of God way ahead of time. He knew that men would crucify the Lord Jesus Christ, his only son. He knew in his foreknowledge that he would raise him from the dead the third day. We see God, I believe, knew and thought of all that in his planning for salvation. I'm saying this morning that salvation is of the Lord. You know, Jonah, after he took a trip down in the belly of that whale, and that wasn't no pleasant time down there. How would you like to be down there in the, in the stomach, digestive part of that big old whale and the seaweeds and whatever else he'd eat wrapping all around you? Uh, you'd come out, you wouldn't be, you'd need a bath if you come out of that situation. You'd need, you'd need a hose down. You'd need to call the volunteers from Vashti and say, bring the big truck, bring the big truck. I need to get cleaned up. 
you'd need some help, wouldn't you? But whenever Jonah came through all of that, he came out saying this, salvation is of the Lord. Amen. 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 Salvation is of the Lord. In Jonah 2 verse 9, I believe it is. So my message this morning, salvation is of the Lord. And then his planning, but not only his planning, thank God his providing. In the fullness of time, he sent for his son, Jesus. God incarnate, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Only God could plan a plan and send His Son that would be sufficient for all men. Isn't that a blessing? The whosoever will plan. Anybody fits, you know, one size fits all, amen. Everybody, there's room at the cross. I'm glad we sing the song sometimes. Though millions have come, thank God this morning, there's still room for one at the cross, Amen. I'm glad there's room. And the ground's level at the cross. You say, what about the cross, preacher? We used to say that a whole lot, and I heard that all my life. The ground's level. Everybody comes the same way. Rich, poor, you know, big, little, whatever, young or old. All the same way, the cross, the ground's level at the cross. We talk about that in society, leveling the playing field. Praise God. The only God level the playing field like no one else has ever. Whosoever will, the planning and the providing his only begotten son to come. And then we see the beginning. You say, how did we get in on it? By faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. By faith of righteousness. This is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and if you'll believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord is uh, it, over all is rich unto all that call upon his name. 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our verse 21, the Bible said, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank God his provision, his providing. And then the beginning, the beginning is whenever we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to notice as we go on our verses here in Acts chapter 2, beginning 21, 22. Then we see in verse 23, the Bible said, having been determined by the determined counsel of God, that they took and slain. And then verse 24, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Here's one of those places in the scripture where one of those impossibilities. Thank God he, raised the, he rose from the dead the third day, but it was not possible that he could be holding of death. God had already determined and planned that in, in, before creation, I believe, that his son would be raised on the third day. You say, how, how come you believe that, preacher? First Corinthians 15, he died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day. Why? According to the scripture. The determined counsel of God. Now there's something interesting that I begin to see as I was studying this this week and it got me on shouting ground. I don't know where it'll get us this morning. But you think about the only begotten son of God. He was sinless. Sinless. He was tempted at all points such like as we are, yet without sin. Sinless. Being sinless, he could not die. You say, preacher, what in the world are you talking about? You've done talk about that he, that he died, he rose again. Being sinless, he could not die. But he did die. Well, you say, how did all that come about? 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. In the book of Peter, the Bible said he bore our sins in his own body on the tree. He was sinless. He could not die because he was sinless, but he died because God laid our sin, my sin and your sin, and he made Jesus sin that he could die for our sins. What a blessing. He did that for us. 
Jesus himself said in John chapter 10, I believe, he said, no man take of my life from me. I lay it down. The good shepherd gave his life for the sheep. He could not die until God laid the sins of you and I. You say, why do you say that? Because the wages of sin is what? Death. My sins and your sins took them on Calvary and bore them on his, in his own body on the tree and he dies there for the sins of the whole world. Isn't that a blessing? Sins of the whole world. Heard an old country preacher preaching one time and said, glory to God, it don't make no difference what you've done. How many times you've done it? There's blood sufficient that flows from Calvary's cross to cleanse every sin. He is our perpetuation. Thank God this morning, not for our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. He took it all on Calvary and died there. The grave could not hold him. I thought about in studying this, what preacher Chris said one time. He said, we that are saved, praise God, we can celebrate Christmas and Easter every day. Death could not hold his prey. Jesus, my Savior. Thank God he tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, triumphant over the foes. Thank God, hallelujah, Jesus, he arose. Amen. The beginning is when we put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and we're saved by the wonderful grace of God. Not a works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us. No wonder we, we call amazing grace. And thank God for that selection this morning. We call it the Baptist theme song. But that's Baptist we're not completely selfish. We don't mind anybody else that's saved singing that song, do we? If they don't even know what a Baptist is, amen. Uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Old John Newton wrote that song. He was in the slave traffic, John Newton was. And he got so low, he became a slave himself. But he got saved by the wonderful grace of God and he wrote the song that probably all of us wished that we'd written, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. And it was grace. It was grace all the way. It was grace that taught my heart to fear. And, and God's grace and His amazing grace that He sent the Holy Spirit to convict me to start with and realize that I was on my way to hell. It was grace that taught me to fear to fear God. But the grace that taught me to fear was the same grace, praise God, that relieved the fear. <laughs> grace took care of it all, didn't it? Thank God for His grace. So the beginning is when we trust our, put our faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it, don't we have a wonderful God this morning? No wonder in the book of John, chapter 4, I believe it is, verse 8, 1 John said, God is love. God is love. I read the story, and you may be familiar with it. It's a wonderful story of D.L. Moody many years ago. And he was in England, and I believe the preacher's name was uh, Moreland or something. I can't remember his name. But he had met a preacher there, I believe, in London somewhere. And, and D.L. Moody had said to him, said, if you're ever in the United States of America, I want you to come uh, to the church there, Moody Church in Chicago, and I want you to preach. Well, as it would be, he did come to America. He contacted D.L. Moody and said, I'm here. And he, and he was going to uh, make good the invitation that he'd been given. D.L. Moody carried through and he set up to, uh, a week of meetings. The preacher got up the first night and said, I want you to turn to John 3.16. And I want to preach a message on the love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believed in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So He preached a message on the love of God. Come back on Tuesday night and He said, I searched the Scriptures and I've been praying. 
And, and I couldn't find a better text. And I want to preach from John 3.16 tonight. On the love of God. Wednesday night he came in and said, I prayed much this day and I've scourged the scriptures again. I couldn't find a better text and I'll preach on John 3.16. The love of God. And so it was Thursday and so it was Friday. The great meeting. After the meeting, D.L. Moody had a different look about the love of God. And as the story says it, the lights in the Moody Church there in Chicago at that time, back in the 1800s, D.L. Moody made him some signs, and he hung a sign on every light, and it said, God is love. He goes out in front of the church building there in Chicago, Moody Church, and he hung signs up and said, God is love. In God's love, the promotion of His love, the motivation of His love for you and I, and before the world ever begun, He made a redemption plan for me and for you and for the whole world. Isn't that a blessing? He's so loved. We've got a great God, haven't we? The planning, the beginning. And then my fourth point this morning is the carrying on. <laughs> the carrying on. And I've got 14 points on that. The carrying on. And when I said that, I better be careful. I might be the only one that's carrying on. Uh, the Christian life. And I thought about being saved, knowing the Lord. The carrying on. And I began to think, and I have got 14 things that I'd written down. And I thought about in the Bible, in the Word of God, some descriptions of the Christian life. You know, there's a wonderful verse, Preacher Chris and I, we love that verse, Galatians 2 and 20. And it said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, we walk not by sight, but by faith. Four times in the scripture, the Bible said, the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You said, what's the Christian life about this morning, preacher? It's just walking by faith, amen. We're trusting Him day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour. I can't even walk without Him holding my hand, thank God. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Descriptions of the Christian life. And Timothy's a man in the fort back there this morning, and I certainly appreciate him for doing that. And if you can find them 14 things, just flash them up there, and we'll look at some of them this morning as far as we can go. And uh, whenever time's up, Timothy, I'll put you in charge of this. <laughs> He waved his hand at me. He's got it. He's got it. And you say, why would you do something like that? Because if I go over, you know who you're going to blame? Not the preacher. Everybody's going to be on Timothy. <laughs> Amen. He didn't stop it in time. I thought about some descriptions of the Christian line. You know, as I began to study them and think about them, it helped me to think, you know, what we ought to be doing and some things about our life as a Christian. A lot of things described in the Bible of the Christian and as I mentioned, some of them, several of these, and maybe four of them or something, I can't remember all together, are in 2 Timothy chapter 2. I remember one time I preached a message from 2 Timothy chapter 2. Had 23 points in that sermon. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, if y'all want me to, if I get that urgent inspiration again from 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'll, I'll get somebody to put out an email and warn everybody. You know, the preacher's preaching 2 Timothy chapter 2, and you can either make the choice of whether you want to come or what you want to do. So we'll be fire about it. But anyway, 2 Timothy chapter 2, there's several of them. But, you know, we're described as a Christian life. Some descriptions of the Christian life. Number one, we're a soldier. He says in that chapter, be a good soldier. Endure sardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I tried to preach on Paul, said he'd fought a good fight. We're a soldier. But another thing in that chapter, we see not only are we a, we're a soldier, we're a farmer. The word that the Bible uses is husbandman, a farmer. We're a farmer. You say, how, do you, how does that relate to us as a Christian? Well, I read some things in the book of First Corinthians, I believe you do the same. It's talking about one planting and another watering. You know, thank God for the, in the body of Christ and the Christian, there's a work for all to do. Some of them doing the planting. Some of them doing the watering. But here's the blessing of that all. You say, what happens then? God gives the increase. God gives the increase. We see we're farmers. Then we're runners. Irvin Luster's got a program, Running to Win. Running to Win. 
In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, it said, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And while we're running this race, let us be mindful to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. Some descriptions of the Christian life helps us to understand something about the Christian life and what we ought to do. You say, what we ought to do? We ought to lay aside some of the weights. You know, there's some things in life that maybe not necessarily as we would categorize as a sin as such, but it might be a weight that's holding us back. Anything that will hold us back in the race will rob us at the finish line. Some weights that does so easily beset us. Just some things that we need to lay aside. Amen. We're runners. Then not only that, we're workers. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. We're workmen. We're workers. And then in that chapter again, it says we're vessels. So there's two, four, five of them at least in the Second Timothy chapter 2 that it talks about descriptions of the Christian life. Then Jesus said to the disciples, said, you're fishers of men. Fishers of men. Now, I know, there may be some in here that enjoy fishing. I never have been a fisherman or a hunter or anything, golfing, no hobbies. And that's unusual. And I'm not recommending that for nobody. Get you a gun, go hunting, amen. If you get the urge about it, I've got some down there that walk around the yard and whatever, you know, they just all over the place. You can just help yourself. Uh, fishing. Other sports and invitation. You know, about all I do is eat and sleep and preach, praise God. <laughs> that about fills up my time. Fishers of men. Amen. And then not only that, Jesus said, you're salt. I remember years ago, Brother Mays Jackson, some of y'all may remember him. He used to have on the radio the truck driver special. He, he lived in Atlanta, Georgia. And he said, this is Brother Mays coming to you again. All you 18-wheelers out there, he said, the truck driver special. He preached on the radio. He preached uh, all over the country every week. He preached uh, 50 weeks a year, and uh, two weeks he was off, he went into the prisons and preached. He was one more preaching machine. But I remember his wife, Dot. She was a very reserved lady, uh, not outspoken as such. But once in a service, she stood up and testified. And she said, I want you to pray for me that God would make me so salty that I would cause others to be thirsty for Jesus. We're salt, we're light. The Bible said, you're the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And then he said, you and I are the light of the world. We used to sing a song when I was a kid, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And I was raised there in, uh, well, Roan River, but we called it Rock Creek. And, uh, and Rock Creek's pretty close, you know, and uh, maybe more familiar. We used to sing that in the church. And we'd say, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And our teacher that taught us the little song and said, I'm going to let it shine all over Rock Creek. <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. And then the song went on and said, and I ain't going to let the devil blow it out either. I'm going to let it shine. You know, the Bible said in Matthew chapter 5, let your light shine that men may see your good works and Glorify your Father which is in heaven. We're light. And then we're branches. John 15. Jesus said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. And abide in me. All the way a branch can bear fruit if it's hooked into the vine. Thank God this morning. Then in the book of 2 Corinthians 5, we're ambassadors. Isn't that a blessing? I had a preacher friend of mine. He used to he pull some things sometime and he was somewhere and... Uh, I can't remember now where it was. He traveled quite a bit preaching meeting, but he was somewhere or another. And anyway, maybe checking in the motel or something. And he checked himself in and told the lady, said, I'm an ambassador. And immediately, you know, her antennas went up. She thought, well, we got somebody special. She's staying with us tonight. You know, here's an ambassador. <laughs> you know, what country <laughs> are you from? Well, my citizenship is in heaven. And I'm representing the King of kings and Lord of lords. I'm an ambassador. Ain't that a blessing? Ain't that a blessing that God takes somebody like me, just a nobody going nowhere, and make an ambassador out of it? Ain't that something special? 
You know, I never would attain that status in the worldly system. But you and I, you say, well, what about you? You this morning as a believer are an ambassador. I like this. You know, the society would push us plumb in the corner. They want to stop every conservative voice in America. They don't think you can be saved and believe in Jesus and profess Christianity and they don't want you holding no office in this country even though it was founded upon the Bible and the Word of God. But I'm an ambassador. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then not only that, praise God, I'm a priest. I don't have to go to an earthly priest and get them to kind of communicate for me in some man. But we're all individual priests. He has made us kings and priests. You say, as a priest, what can you do? I can enter the very throne room of God through my great high priest. Amen. We're on priest. You don't have to come to the preacher to get access to God and there's no other man on the face of the earth. Praise God, you can just be driving down the road. And I might do this to be fair. You can be either in a Ford or Chevrolet. And you can get a hold of God, the very throne room of God. Amen, Amen we're priests. And then last of all, we're strangers and pilgrims. Book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Peter said we're just strangers and pilgrims. In the book of Psalms, the psalmist said in one verse there, he said, I'm a sojourner, just like all of my fathers were. I'm just passing through. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. And we used to sing this little song. said, I don't want to get adjusted to this world. We're just passing through. Had an old missionary come to our church, first church I ever pastored, and I took him out to eat. The waitress come by, and she was kind of, you know, where are y'all from, this, that, and that. Just a little, kind of talking a little bit, and he just told her his name. And, and he said, uh, I'm headed, and he told the state he was from, I can't even remember now. But he said, I'm headed for heaven, and I just stopped off in North Wilkesboro today. <laughs> I'm just passing through. You know, all of us this morning, we're on the brushy mountain, but we're just passing through. Amen. Just passing through. And thank God for His mercy and enjoyment while we're here. Amen. It's a blessing, ain't it, and His mercy to us, but we're just passing through. Just passing through. You say, how quick are you passing through? Well, the Bible says in the book of James, I'm just like a vapor that appears for a little while and then it's gone. Life is almost like a shadow, the Bible says. It's, you know what a shadow, you see it. And then when the light comes, you know the shadow's gone. Dispels the shadow. We're just passing through. Just a little while here. But praise God, we're headed somewhere wonderful. Heaven, amen. Salvation. Oh, the planning of God. Aren't you glad we've got a great God like that? Amen. That He planned before eternity, ever, before the earth was ever created in creation. I believe He acted in redemption. Thank God this morning. You said that's way too deep for you and I. Yeah, it is too deep, but boy, it is good to wrecking on, ain't it? <laughs> sure does something down here in my heart. You say, well, what does that mean so much for you? I've got a God that cares so much about me that before I was ever born and before He ever made man put Him in the garden, He said, I need a redemption plan for Roger. You say you believe that? Well, if I'm reading that verse right, I believe that. Not me, but the whole world. He made a redemption plan. Somebody said when he was, when he was on the cross that I was on his mind. Praise God, I was on his mind before he ever created the earth. You said, boy, you really setting yourself up special just because I know Jesus. Let's stand. I said to each one this morning, and those that are watching by way of video, if you don't know Jesus, well, you can trust Him and be saved. Salvation is of the Lord. The greatest, wonderful, most great thing that ever happened to you or ever happened to me, any individual that's ever been born, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Lord, you sure have been good to us here at Bethany today. 
Lord, you start out the very, act, the very uh, start of the service and you just anointed the service. Your presence has been so real and precious. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for that. Those that would think that old time religion don't work and we have no assurance and we're just believing something because we've uh, believed in it in our mind because we've been passed down to it. But thank God I'm glad it's real. I'm glad it's real. Oh, it's real. And the assurances has come to our heart this morning. What a blessing. Salvation is all the Lord. Lord, there's hearts out there. There's ears to hear. And I pray, Lord, that it would not be, as the Scripture says, having ears to hear but not hear. But I pray that the message would go out and the ears indeed would hear and the heart would be receptive. And those that are lost, they'd be saved. For Christ's sake, we'd pray. We that are saved, you surely have been good to us. Lord, you've been good to Bethany this morning to bless us the way you have here in the service. What a blessing that is. We can never thank you enough for all you've done for us. Help us as we sing invitation. May it be to your honor and glory in Christ's name. Amen. A sweet service, don't you think? God's good. Boy, we just praise Him. Amen. Amen. It's been good to us. I don't know how long I preach, but I feel good. Amen. I just feel good in the Lord. Oh, how He loves us. Amen. Again, we appreciate your prayers. Thank you for praying for us. Continue praying. Lord, we, we just thank you for your kindnesses and just been so gracious. And I tried to put in practice what I preached a few weeks back about it's my pleasure. You remember that little thing I told about that? It's my pleasure. So I'm hipping Beverly, and I sit down, and she needs something, I get up. And so it's up and down, up and down. So f finally, and we started out the night awake every hour on that schedule, and we've been through that before. But anyway, and she said, I appreciate you having me. And I said, it's my pleasure. But I was telling Brother Gary that, and then I thought, I better make a confession before I get up here and try to preach. It's not always that I'm excited about that when I say it's my pleasure. It's not always easy to say, but it sure is helping the situation. It's helping me a little bit, not to be so grumpy. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I hope it works out good. I know it worked out good for the restaurant that are lined around the building every time you go. <laughs> People getting that food. It's my pleasure. Amen to serve you. You know, ain't it a pleasure to serve the Lord? Yeah, it's just a pleasure to be here this morning, wasn't it? Amen. I mean, it's our pleasure, amen? 
our pleasure. Amen. God's so good. Amen. And let me all say this to you. What an impression your dad made on me. It's through that amazing grace that I stand. Because had it not been for that amazing grace, he would not have been the man that he was. Yeah. God's good. Folks knew where he came from. How angry and unloved he was. But through the grace of God. Hey. A man named Merlin Ball and Miss Isla showed him what the love of God was. And through the other people on this mountain that showed him what the love of God was. Amen. Amen. With that amazing grace. Amen. 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 Let's be dismissed in prayer. Brother Armit, would you dismiss us?